around the bunkhouse, sing a cowboy melody. It's home sweet home to me. Let the coyotes keep a howling, prowling on that lone prairie. It's home sweet home to me. Keep a singing, Mr. Bluebird. All you have to do. It's a pleasure, Mr. Bluebird, to sing along with you. Take me back to fields of clover, where a buckaroo should be. It's home sweet home to me. Haven't seen you, Mr. Neighbor, long as we've been gone. That corral's a waiting neighbor to hang my saddle on. Gonna serenade my lady Hey, Roy! With a banjo Stop on that my knee It's home sweet home to me Every time you start singing this nag heel starts flying That's what you've been saying all the way from Arizona Why don't you call it quits? Quit nothing? I told you I was going to break this wall-eyed cayuse to drive and buy cracky out the door. Ain't no dad blamed horse going to make fool out of me. I'll take a run out of you. Stretch your legs, you ornery broom tail. He's all right, Trigger. He'll find his way to town. You picked a mighty gloomy time to come back, Roy. All you hear is talk of war and secession. Well, I thought Missouri voted to stay in the Union. Legally, we are loyal. But morally, we've got a divided household. If war does come, it will probably take every resource the South possesses. Oh, by the way, don't worry about your horses. I'll take them off your hands myself. Hmm, thanks a lot, Mr. Morrison, but that's a little out of your line, isn't it? Well, the way conditions are, good horses are going to be at a premium. We won't have any trouble making a deal. <laughs> I guess I'm hearing things, Trigger. I could have sworn I recognized that whistle. How dare you? Can a person walk down the street without being insulted? I'm sorry, ma'am. Well, I should think you would be. A kid himself. What are you doing back in Missouri? It's a long story. Well, come on, let's have a talk and drink this thing over. You do the drinking, I'll eat. I'm hungry enough to chew field corn. Well, you came to the right place. I'll introduce you to the best cook in Kelso. Hey, Joe, look who's here. Hello, Roy. Howdy, Joe. Take me a drink while I get Roy something to eat. Come back with me and I'll take you in as a partner. Oh, thanks. If I ever have anything to do with horses, I won't raise them, I'll race them. And uh, what are you going to do? Plenty. As soon as I get the sort of proposition I want. Dave, old son, you drift. Who says I am? Well, I'm considering a proposition right now. Looks good, too, if we have war. You'll never make any money soldiering. Hey, any time I fight, it won't be for four bits a day. I'm going to ride with a real leader, a man who knows how to make war pay. Who is he? Well, if you must know, he's the best friend the South has ever had in the state of Missouri. Not if he means easy money. Well, maybe that's the kind I like. It's the kind that'll get you in trouble. Oh, 
It's McBride. McBride's coming in. Come on, Roy. It's Val McBride. Sorry to bust up your game, Roy, but they'll have to wreck the place. Well, where you been this time, McBride? Give you one guess. I bet you've been over playing tag with those Kansans. You're right the first time. Where's Best Warren? Right here, Val. A present for you. Val McBride, you angel. Here, here. You'll have all these folks thinking that I'm in love with you instead of your cooking. <laughs> Hello, Dave. Hello, Captain McBride. Been waiting long? No, no, not at all. Things are working out fine. Lots better than we expected. Step up, everybody. The drinks are on the house. A true southern hostess. <laughs> you know, one of these days, I'm going to buy you the finest place in Missouri. I look worried about something. I am. Dave, you're in bad company. McBride? You got them all wrong. You mean those raids over in Kansas? That's exactly what I mean. He's the worst cutthroat that ever put a torch to a farmhouse. Well, they had it coming. Why, there isn't a man in Kansas who wouldn't shoot McBride on sight. And I'll tell you why. He went in there pretending he was their friend. George Bannon, he called himself. And he turned on them and sold them out. What was that name I heard? Bannon. George Bannon. I never heard of George Bannon. Neither did you. That's funny. You're the spitting image of him. Even to that scar. Scratch that ceiling! Hey, McBride! Hey, McBride! McBride, Union troops coming. We better hit the road. And you better hit it fast. You're all wrong about McBride. Why, there isn't a man in his command who wouldn't die for him if he had to. Why, they all swear by him. He's got you fooled. I can see that. Send that to Ed Mason over in Baines, Kansas. He'll be glad to get it if he's still alive. Well, see, I, I ain't done nothing. Turn me loose, you blue nose yanks. What do you want with me? You're a friend of McBride's, aren't you? Me? A friend of that skunk? Ah, you don't know what you're talking about. Anything wrong, Lieutenant? We have it on reliable authority that McBride was seen heading this way. Oh, I hope not. If anyone here has seen or heard of Val McBride, speak up. What? Now, wait a minute. I can tell you about... What's that? What I was going to say is, you're just wasting your time trying to get anything out of us. Well, for your information, McBride has been outlawed by the federal government. Anyone found harboring or protecting him will be found equally guilty of treason. Boy, you sure gave me a scare. You sure gave me a blister. How long have you known McBride? You know, I can't figure you, Roy. First, you're ready to fight McBride. Then when you have a chance to square accounts, you don't even open your mouth. I know how he operates. Five lone soldiers wouldn't have a dog's chance against that mob of bushwhackers. He just left town, sir. He rode south about ten minutes ago. Roy! Roy! Fool soldiers are going chasing McBride after all. Well, they'll be ambushed. We've got to stop them. from. 
five little tin soldiers. Boy, we'd ought to be ashamed of ourselves. Better than shooting rabbits. And they had just a little too much spunk for their own good. They didn't even have a fighting chance. I don't like it no better than you do. But I've got to make out a report. Jones, you rode out there. What's your opinion? Oh, I'd say it was Indian, Sheriff. All right. That's what I'll put down. Doggone their lion souls. What's the use? Even if we had proof, that sheriff wouldn't do anything. He's afraid to go after McBride. That isn't Roy Rogers. It couldn't be. That's who it is. The same fellow you slapped this morning. Dave, you're joking. Oh, I'm not. It's the same Roy Rogers who used to fight with me to see who would carry your books home from school. I can't believe it. I'll go over and get it. Oh, no, Dave, not now, please. I'd rather wait till tomorrow night and surprise him. Do you have those invitations? Right here. Well, make him promise to come, but don't say anything about me. I won't, beautiful. All right, Henry. Roy. You remember Doc Ratford who lived the other side of town? Sure I do. Well, I hope to tell you. Didn't I ride and get Doc Radford the day Roy was born? <laughs> you're darn tootin' it in. Rode 20 miles through a howling blizzard. Well, he heard you were in town and asked me to give you these. Hey, what does that RSVP mean? Is that some kind of a new secret organization? job and settle down. make you a wager. The best horse in Missouri against a plug hat. Within 30 days, Jeff Davis will have a solid south from the Mason-Dixon line to the Gulf. <laughs> You'll have to find a Republican to take that wager, Doctor. <laughs> or a Kansan. <laughs> Howdy, Dr. Radford. Well, sir, it's high time you were looking up your old friend. Sure glad to see you again. You remember Mr. Whitaker, don't you? <laughs> Do I? How are you, old-timer? Fits a fiddle, Jason. There's Laura over there now, Roy. She yeah. wants to see it. My granddaughter. The last time you saw her, she was wearing pigtails. I remember a scrawny kid with freckles and a pug nose. Right, Dave? If that's all you remember, you've got a surprise coming. <laughs> now, where did she go? I'll find her. Oh, them darn feet, they're killing me. Listen. 
Let's go over. Not out of your life. I'm staying right here. Blasted boots. to see you here. You're sorry? Yes, ma'am. I mean, no, ma'am. I'm glad you're here so I can explain about yesterday morning. Well, I'm the one who should apologize, Mr. Rogers. How did you know my name? Why shouldn't I? I'm the scrawny little kid who tagged at your heels when I was in pigtails. You don't mean Laura. Well, I got rid of the freckles, but there wasn't much I could do about the pug nose. Up to your old tricks again, I see. Still trying to steal my girl away from me. Oh, come on, you two. I don't want to see any black eyes or bruised knuckles. Mammy Lou, if you was my cook, I eat chicken three meals a day. <laughs> Mr. Gabby, you is a flattering this man. <laughs> I'll be a knock-kneed bobcat. You'll be a witch? Oh, forget it. Pardon me, gentlemen. May I have this dance? Well, of course. Pardon, ma'am, is there anybody you want to see? Yes, there is. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Word has just been received that Fort Sumter has been fired upon. The war is on. Pardon. Three cheers for the Confederacy! Hooray! Hooray! Your attention. Word to the gentlemen here tonight. The South has sounded the call to arms. Missouri has turned her back on the Confederacy. But that won't keep the Southern sons of this state from fighting for Jeff Davis. Hooray! Hooray! what I tell you? I don't know how you feel, but speaking for myself, I can say that I'm ready to fight for the Confederacy with every man in my command. Dave? We leave town in 30 minutes. Dave, you're not riding with McBride. Why not? Well, I don't blame you for wanting to go to war. I'm going to fight for the South myself. But if you really want to serve the Confederacy, join the regular army. Wear the uniform. Don't fight for a black leg like McBride. He's talking mighty good sense, son. Don't tell me what to do. Can't you see what he's after? All he wants is a chance to loot, murder, and burn. You've had your say, now I'll have mine. I need money. I need it bad, and I need it fast. McBride's offered me the chance I want, and I'm taking it.
Mister, we're here to help you. I've had enough help for one day. Clear out of here. Now, wait a minute. We ain't blue coats. We're scouts attached to the Confederate Army. The last bunch was Confederates, too. Anyhow, they were wearing a uniform. I know, but rebel soldiers raiding rebel folks don't make sense. It does to me. There's only one low-down traitor who could do it. McBride. Who else? We're on our way to the Army of the West, sir. I'll see if the General Stark hears about this outrage. Chief of Scouts for Generals Longstreet, Beauregard, and Stonewall Jackson. I don't mind saying, Captain Rogers, I'm glad to get you. Thank you, sir. The hardest job you and your scouts will have is keeping our lines of communication open. We're gradually being forced out of Missouri. Any hour now, I expect the order to retreat. General, I'd like to ask if Captain McBride is attached to this command. Yes, I'm sorry to say. What do you know about him? Only this. I've ridden through every county between here and the Tennessee line. Wherever I went, I found wreck and ruin because of McBride and his raiders. I've already sent for him. I'm putting a stop to his outrageous attacks on civilians. We have all we can do to fight the war. You better wait for me at camp, Dave, and see that the men look to the horses before they eat. Right. Captain McBride reporting, sir. At ease, Captain. The War Department has instructed me to answer your petition for promotion under the Rangers Partisan Act. What do I get for my services to the South, sir? Colonelcy? A reprimand. Did I understand the general? Evidence, both civilian and military, has reached this board of inquiry regarding your tactics. Your promotion is refused on the grounds that you failed as a gentleman and a southern officer to observe even the commonest decencies of war. In short, Captain McBride, the Confederacy cannot and will not tolerate looting and the killing of civilians. Lies. Dirty, rotten lies. I'll have satisfaction if I have to go to Richmond myself. My advice to you is to thank this board for giving you a last chance to erase the blot you've placed on the Confederacy. A stigma so black that your name has become linked with every conceivable form of brutality. Let me tell you something. Fighting on paper in the halls of West Point is one thing. Fighting it out on the frontier is another thing. A tough fight calls for tough fighters. If you'd listen to me, the Army wouldn't be getting ready to retreat out of Missouri right now. Captain McBride, you'll conform to orders or face court-martial. That's final. I expect you to wait for further instructions. Dismissed. I volunteered to fight for the South. I gave her better men, better equipped, the best fighting unit in the entire South. Haven't we done our share of the fighting? But what do we get? Reprimand. From a bunch of stiff shirts. A bunch of long hairs who think they can tell Val McBride how to fight. They say we've disgraced their colors. I say let's fight under our own flag. They can't tell us what to do. We're with you. We'll show them. The devil take the South. From now on out, we're fighting for ourselves. Laura, I'm surprised to see you here. Where else would I be? Dr. Radford. I'm glad to see you, Roy. You've got to leave. The Union troops are closing in. I'm getting a little too old to run. Have you seen Dave? Once. It was months ago when we took Lexington. I whistled at him when he rode past. Why, it's Mr. Morris. Troops have moved down without taking that consignment of gold at the bank. Yes, and it's sure to be confiscated by the Federals. We'll get it. 
Uh, Dirt tootin' we will. We'll blow that bank to kingdom come. Men. That's fine, Bess. Looks like you're gonna get your new place after all. Well, you'll have to kill him before you get that gold. Any objections? Guess not. All right, men, we ride. You can't. If McBride finds out, he'll kill you. I'll take my chances on that. Get on your feet, bushwhacker. Dave! Yeah, it's me. Put that gun down. I came back to help Roy. You come back to rob him. It'd be worth my life if McBride knew I was here. And don't forget, I didn't have to come back. Now put that gun down and give me a hand. Roy is still alive. I can take care of that boy without no help from you. With no, what? Just look at you. Steady. All right. You win. Where do we take him? There's a squatter's cabin about five miles down the road. You'll find your horse over there in the brush. How do you do, ma'am? <laughs> well, you give me a start when you first come up. I thought you was Yankees. Why, the poor man's hurt. He's badly wounded. I'll pay you well if you take him in and send for a doctor. Ain't no doctors near about, but he's welcome to anything here. Well, thanks. We'll bring him in. I'll get the bed ready. You know, Artie, how glad I to get these diddles, mister. With an army of begging my corn and my hogs. The gorillas are raiding my smokehouse. There ain't nothing left to keep body and soul together. Breathing's better and his fever's down. Oh, he's pulled through worse scrapes than this. Well, if he does, you won't be here to see it. Maybe you're right. I wouldn't want him to know. I mean, about me being with a man. Oh, no, who... don't worry. I'd cut my heart out before I'd break his over a measly skunk like you. You never did have much use for me. Why should I? I always knowed you was trifling and weak right down to the core. But I stood for you. Roy wouldn't have it any other way. Trying to help him now don't change matters with me none. And if you ever come near him again, I'll drill you right twitch the eyes, so help me. Now get out of here and ride before he comes to and finds you. Hey, Captain! 
This man says Rogers is still alive. What do you mean? That's what I heard. He's alive and gunning for you. Roy, there's one thing I never could understand. Why you'd have anything to do with a no good fella like Dave. Dave's all right, Gabby. He just got off to a bad start, that's all. Well, maybe so. He did show it wasn't all bad when you was shot and he come back to help you. Why didn't you tell me this before? Good reason why. You being so young and lacking the experience I had, I figured maybe you'd give up the chase for McBride. We'll find him. <laughs> You're darn tootin' we will. There's one thing about a fallen skunk. It ain't hard to keep on his trail. <laughs> Look at this. Now, for once the Union Army has done us a favor. This order is going to help plenty. McBride and his men are going to be smoked out in the open. We got riding to do. You bet we have, and we're going to travel straight to headquarters. That border country has always been one of McBride's strongholds. He could hold up there for weeks and have plenty of backwoods friends to feed him and give him warning in case of trouble. We'll get him now. All we need is a handful of men to handle his trail, and keep him and his guerrillas on the move. How do you propose to get through the Union lines? Soldiers will never get McBride. He could see those uniforms a mile off. I'll need about eight volunteers, men who know the Missouri trails and who have personal reasons for wanting to get McBride. Very well. I'll give you authority to muster the necessary volunteers. The South has had enough of this lawless guerrilla. Uh, but tell me one thing, Captain. Where are you going to look for him? I can't say, sir. But I have a hunch I know about where to start. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Never heard of him. Oh, that's too bad. Trying to join up with him again. Got separated during the last raid. Wait. I guess I can tell you. He was here yesterday. Him and a young fella named Dave. for that horse. Somebody might hear you. He's coming now. Doctor here? Yes, sir, Mr. Dave. Get our horses out of sight. Yes, sir. I'll tell him myself. I'll see that murdering gorilla in his grave before I lift a hand to help him. Where is this Stephen Cutthroat? Right here, Dr. Radford. Did I understand you to say you refused to fix this wound? That's what I said. You either take the bullet out of this arm or the next one out of here. Grand, please. We'll pull up at Dr. Radford's and rest the horses. These horses ain't tired and you know it. What do you want to stop for? Just to have a look around. Take it easy, you old hypocrite. 
I like to see you squirm. Maybe you'll remember this the next time you put a bullet to somebody. Too bad the party that did this wasn't a better shot. It's Roy. Sorry to trouble you, but we're not finished yet. But remember, the doctor's with me. Emmy Lou, you answer the door. Wait here. Hey, you ain't fooling me, none. You come here to see that female Radford woman. Well, howdy, Mammy Lou. You're looking well. Maybe I am, but I'm feeling kind of pale. Is that Laura? Uh, yes, Mr. Ross. But Mr. Ross. Howdy, Laura. Don't let me stop you. That was beautiful. It's the first time I've played in months. I'm afraid it's a little out of tune. Sounded all right to me. How's the doctor? Is he around? Why, yes. He's here somewhere. I'd like to see the old fire eater. Where is he? Well, didn't you come to see me? Yes, of course. I just wanted to have a little talk with him. Remember this one? Sure I do. Mammy Lou used to sing it to us when we were so high. Lazy old moon. Keep shining, shining down for me. Lazy old moon, I'm pining, pining just to be. my foot hurt. How do you suppose that horseshoe nail got in my boot? Shining down for me on that old plantation where I used to roam like my weary way back home. Where does blood come from? I... I don't know. Looking for me? I was. Laura, I'm surprised at you. The minute I turn my back, I find my rival cutting in again. Dave, you're not fooling anyone. I know McBride's here. If you think so, why don't you call your men in? You know why? They'd kill you right along with him. Well, that's what you came for, isn't it? You helped save my life the last time. I'm paying off that debt. I'm giving you one last chance to get away from McBride and stay away. You don't owe me anything. Dave, you're all wrong. You've got to listen to him. You're all wasting your time preaching sermons to me. Sure, I'm wrong. I've been wrong ever since I started. I knew what I was doing when I joined McBride. I like his way of fighting a war. I like the tight corners we've been in and fought our way out of. Yeah, I like the whole exciting mess. If you're all through, get this straight. I left the Army for one reason to get McBride, and I'm gonna get him. Only the next time, you better not be with him. Because if you are, I'll have to get you too. Dave, I'm ashamed of you. Let's get started. We've been waiting for you. We're running a Confederate dispatch rider. He was carrying this. Just wasn't his lucky day.
It's more like it. If we can get a hold of that ammunition, we can hold our men together. That ought to be easy. There won't be no detachment of troops to meet them. Go get on your horse and tell the boys we'll reassemble at Stone Ridge. Bridge men. There's something here about a shipment of ammunition. They may try to head it off. We've got to warn them. One of you men take care of him. Ammunition train's coming up the valley now. How many men? Three wagons. A driver and guard on each one and two outriders. Eight men. We won't have any trouble handling them. All right, men. on detached duty. You're in danger of an attack by McBride's guerrillas. Show them your orders from General Stark, Roy. We gotta work fast. We're going after McBride. No use running the horses. They can't catch us in those wagons. What's the matter with you? Nothing. It's only a scratch. Well, we've got to have that ammunition. We'll follow them and we'll wait till dark. Keep on that trail and stay out of sight.
Hey, take me with you. Stop that gun. Start walking. There. Did you see anything of McBride? He must have stopped back there with Sheldon. Probably snuck off when he heard our shots. The rest of them there. How about carrying out our orders? It's got to be done sometime. Might just well get it over with. The order of the Confederate States? and the authority vested in us. You have been tried and found guilty of desertion and treason. You have committed murder and robbery under the leadership of the Gorilla McBride. You are therefore sentenced under military law to pay for your crimes with your lives. If any of you wish to leave letters for your relatives or friends, speak up. I know how you feel, Roy. You go ahead. I'll take care of this. I'll meet you in Kelso. You were a ghost. Not yet. Come on over by the fire and dry yourself. Oh, that's more like it. I'll leave that. It's pretty late. I was just getting ready to close. looking place you have here. It isn't bad, is it? I had to leave Kelso. It was right in the line of fire. Just like that thunder, only worse. Do you have much further to travel? No, this is where I was headed. I expect to meet somebody here. If you mean McBride, you don't think he'd be fool enough to come here, do you? He might. I was just thinking. McBride has been declared an outlaw. And there's a penalty against anyone caught hiding him. Is there? I always thought you were clever. A lot more clever than you let on. But shielding McBride isn't going to get you anywhere. Mm-hmm. Well, drink this hot brandy. It'll do you good. place I could go. Bess, we've only got just a minute. Take this. It'll help me to go elsewhere and get a new start. Rogers, don't make Bess pay. 
for what I've done. You can do this for me. Get me out of here. Or they'll hold her. They won't. You have my word. We got McBride, sir. Where was he hiding? Over in the woods. He was miles from anywhere. Captain Rogers, you're to be commended for your service to the Confederacy. The death of McBride means the end of guerrilla warfare. Thank you, sir. God willing, the war won't last much longer. And we'll soon be returning to our homes. Why don't you get it fixed? Huh. I never thought anything about that. 